3D accelerated graphics is something we take for granted in the modern era. When everything from your gaming computer, consoles, laptops, and even phones handle 3D graphics with ease, it's become an expectation, not the exception. And while retro-style graphics, mostly the 2D kind, have made a big comeback, the fully realized 3D game is now the standard. All thanks to ever more powerful hardware, amazing tool sets, and frankly the relentless march of progress, we now basically expect magic out of our AAA games. Calling a game 3D accelerated isn't even a thing anymore, it's just a game and that's it. But that wasn't always the case of course. Let's go back in time a bit to when a small company called 3DFX busted into the scene and blew our collective minds back in the mid-90s. Welcome back to Rick's Ram Retro, where we like to hit the accelerator. When I was asked to participate in the event of GPU June, I was both pleasantly surprised and immediately thought of what to cover. GPU June is an event where a collection of YouTubers come together to cover GPU related topics for the month of June, thus GPU June. I'll put the appropriate links to the official playlist down in the description for other entries so definitely check those out for some more GPU centric videos. Which brings us right back to the focus of this video, which is the original Voodoo video card. Launched for consumers by 3DFX in 1996, it started a veritable video card arms race with each version and generation consistently and relentlessly iterating on the previous one, still going to this day. 3D accelerated graphics had arrived and they were here to stay. While it wasn't the very first accelerated card to say they cornered the market was an understatement. Enjoying a wide adoption rate and broad industry support it allowed their proprietary Glide API to flourish and around this time launching a 3D game without Voodoo support was not a smart move. Ads for upcoming games proudly and loudly showcased their support for the new 3 dfx back standard. It was the video card to have. So what made it so darn special that everyone loved it? And still do, I might add, as I think the retro tax on old equipment may be the worst on the Voodoo series of cards, since it's something many of us fondly remember. Just go check the sold listings on any popular auction site and you'll see what I mean. I can't speak for everyone else, but when I got this very card, yes I still have it and I use it, I was totally and utterly blown away. After running GL Quake the first time, I specifically remember exclaiming out loud, I can't even see the pixels. Looking back, I'm sure that's a bit of an overstatement, but that's how groundbreaking it was for me. It was something I just hadn't experienced up to that point, and here it was installed in my very own computer. It opened up an entire world for me and would decide my gaming experience for years to come. The actual card in question is the Orchid Righteous 3D that I spent my own saved up on cash on back in 1996. While I wish I still had the box, what I do have is the card and the original bypass cable, more on that in a second. The card features a PCI interface, a 50MHz clock speed, and 4MB of EDO RAM. It's also I think quite a stunning card in the simplicity of the design adorned with the large 3DFX logos. Let's not forget the very righteous, righteous 3D logo on the back. The Voodoo cards were designed and launched as 3D only cards. This means they were not capable of generating 2D graphics like a normal computer desktop. As such, they needed a companion 2D card to handle most of the graphical working games that didn't support the Glide API as well as for your normal computing. A bypass cable was included so when the card was activated it took over the video display and generated the image you see on the screen while your normal 2D card sat dormant. I can't say for sure on the other Voodoo cards but my Righteous 3D generates an immensely satisfying click when the switch occurs meaning something mechanical is actually switching paths on the card. Take a listen and you'll see what I mean. When you heard that click, you know it was go time. To top it off, you had the option to display a 3D effect splash screen loud and proud when it was activated. The truly experience this era again, I'm fortunate to have nearly the same computer I had back when I originally bought this video card, and that's this AST Advantage 8100P. While not the exact model I had, it's extremely close. I've covered this computer previously in a series, so take a look up here if you want to follow along the evolution of this machine for my use. In short, it's currently housing an Intel Pentium Overdrive processor, clocked at 166MHz, 80MB of RAM, and an S3 Verge 4MB video card. Pairing a S3 video card with a Voodoo may be one of the most classic combinations for true PC gaming bliss for the mid-90s era. With our system ready to go, let's take a look at some games. But just before we do that, I wanted to mention something that made me think as I dove headlong into injecting raw nostalgia into my veins. Voodoo graphics, I think, are something special when you consider the time period, and that's key here. Perhaps the raw, software rendered pixelated looks more aligned with the retro aesthetic one might expect, but seeing blended texture in what was for the time not really done on any broad scale yet was exciting and new. 
Yes, the graphics may look a bit washed out at times and things improved quickly with each new generation of video cards. I just ask you to keep in mind what sort of graphics we had before 3D acceleration entered the mainstream, but above all what time period we're looking at. This is what we were used to, which was great, but it was at least for me one of the biggest generational leaps in graphical performance I had experienced. Let's get to those games and we'll see what I mean. I'm running the games in the same resolution between software as well as accelerated modes, which means 640 by 480. This is no surprise and probably the first game you think of when you talk about Voodoo Accelerated Graphics. GL Quake was a total eye-opener for me and truly showed me the real power of this sort of setup. A later pension processor really does struggle to produce decent frame rates at 640x480 in software mode and you likely didn't play like this. The trade-off with visual fidelity versus a smooth frame rate is just not worth it. However, if you want to eat your cake and still have it, this truly sings when switching to the Voodoo Graphics. Just about all the hitching and slowdowns are gone, and experiencing this, you knew it was the future. Playing this game again something you really do notice that, boy, they sure like the color brown, huh? Descent 2 is another classic DOS era title that was updated to work in Windows 95. However, usually you wouldn't play this game at this resolution in software mode, I think it proves a pretty good point. The Pentium machine simply can't provide a smooth experience at this higher resolution. The Voodoo card is able to smooth things out dramatically in the simple geometry and this game works really quite well. The shadows are crispier, light sources look great, and the action is very fluid. The Voodoo card is able to provide an overall better experience. A version of this game actually was included as a pack-in with my cards so it was an early title that was patched to support that acceleration even though the game didn't ship with it. Something that became increasingly more common as 3D effects brought in their support. Another game that's rooted in the DOS era, the vehicle-based shooter action game Extreme Assault isn't bad in software mode, but you were looking at a pretty beefy machine for the time to be able to produce smooth frame rates. Probably beefier than most people had us that this resolution is definitely playable, but not much beyond that. That changes dramatically switching to Voodoo Acceleration, and while some of the details are lost, there are some texture shimmering issues at the seams, the upgrade is definitely noticeable. Smoother, easier to control, and overall much more enjoyable experience, although there's no denying that with so little terrain detail, it's all just a whole lot of green. Shiny Entertainment's quirky action shooter game MDK was and still is a blast to play. Featuring a wide range of gameplay mechanics, the game keeps it fresh throughout. Running in a software rendering mode, in the high quality mode mind you, you can see it hit just and has trouble keeping up. It's definitely playable, you can tell it's struggling and personally I likely would have switched to a low quality mode to get that smoother experience. Looking at Voodoo graphics however, the game gets a performance boost while also providing a jump in video quality. You might say it loses a little bit of its charm going with acceleration, but there's no denying how much better it feels to play. Taking the pace down a bit, Bungie's action strategy game where you command smaller groups of troops in a medieval setting was a big hit. Myth the Fallen Lords focus on tactical deployment and use of your forces in a real-time strategy setting. It feels noticeably choppy playing it in software mode, which has definitely improved once the switch to acceleration. 
It might not be quite as noticeable as in some of our more action-oriented games, but between the smoother terrain details, snappy response, and overall speed improvements, it's hard to argue with the results. Stay down. Yeah. I loved Motor Racer back when I played this game the first time. The sense of speed was incredible. In software mode, however, on this sort of machine, it has no sense of speed. In fact, it's running so sluggish at this resolution I'm having trouble even playing the game. Meanwhile, switching to Voodoo graphics, the difference is night and day. The game now runs much smoother, that sense of speed is restored, and it's actually possible to steer and enjoy the game for what it is. I'm actually still amazed at how well this game translates that sense of speed. Well, certainly not in software mode at this resolution on this machine, though. Welcome to Turok on PC in software mode. That is to say there is no version of Turok that actually supports software rendering. This is a title that actually truly requires a 3D accelerator to even run properly. Think about that for just one second. Here's a game that was ported to PC from a console requiring a 3D accelerator to even play in 1997. I think that speaks both to the adoption rate of 3D accelerators and also what game developers felt comfortable making and selling. The game runs great on a PC with smooth shading, stable frame rates, and really an all-over great way to play an enhanced version of what you might have experienced on console. There we have a smattering and a middly small selection of games running under Voodoo Acceleration. I can't possibly cover all of them, but I'd be curious to hear if you have any favorites you experienced or saw running on a Voodoo card, so feel free to leave a comment about that. I think for me one of the main things of Voodoo graphics is that it transports me to such a specific time period. 3D effects busted onto the scene with a vengeance, but like so many other things that burned bright, they were gone as quickly as they arrived. Merely a few years after they were started and had achieved wide success and adoption, they ran out of steam, declined in sales, and were bought up by NVIDIA. That puts Voodoo supported games firmly into that mid to late 90s era given our nostalgia and anchor, a few short years to look back to. There may never be another time period like it where something so fundamentally changed how we view 3D graphics like when the first Voodoo cards came out. We have 3D effects to thank for that, and know for myself I'll keep enjoying that delightful click and spinning logo as long as I can. And that wraps up our brief look back at the 3D effects of Voodoo graphics card. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I did revisiting it. Be sure to check out the other videos participating in GPU June via the playlist linked below, and as always, thank you very much for watching, and until next time. If you enjoyed this video, perhaps you like some of my other ones as well. You can find me on social media as well as my website at ricksrandomretro.com, or catch me live on Thursdays at 8.45pm Central. <laughs>